Here we have two types of hydroponic systems, deep water culture and cracky hydroponics. But which is best for you? In this video, we are going to take a closer look at each of them. Let's start by covering the largest differences between the two systems. Deep water culture uses a large reservoir of nutrient solution with plants suspended in net pots or containers above the solution. The plant's roots hang down into the nutrient solution and an air pump connected to air stones or diffusers continuously bubbles air into the nutrient solution. This provides oxygen to the roots and prevents them from suffocating. Kratky Hydroponics relies on a simpler setup. Plants are placed in containers or buckets filled with a nutrient solution. Initially, the water completely covers the roots, but as the plant consumes the water and the nutrients, the solution level decreases, exposing the roots to the air. Now that we have a basic understanding of how each system works, let's discuss the differences in aeration, maintenance, complexity, cost, crop selection, and space requirements. Aeration is a critical aspect of deep water culture as it ensures the roots receive an adequate supply of oxygen. Insufficient oxygen can lead to root rot. Proper aeration also helps in nutrient absorption and overall plant health. Here's what you need to know about the aeration requirements for deep water culture. This system requires an air pump. The air pump is an electric device that continuously pumps air into the nutrient solution. This creates bubbles that rise to the surface of the water, agitating and oxygenating it. To disperse the air efficiently and evenly throughout the nutrient solution, air stones or diffusers are used. These are typically made of porous materials that break up the air into fine bubbles. Air stones are placed at the bottom of the nutrient solution. Tubing connects the air pump to the air stones or diffusers. Ensure that the tubing is of appropriate length and diameter to reach the bottom of the reservoir and provide adequate aeration. Deepwater culture systems aim to maintain high dissolved oxygen levels in the nutrient solution, typically above 5 to 6 parts per million. This level of oxygen is necessary for the root system to function optimally and prevent problems like root rot. The air pump should run continuously to ensure a constant supply of oxygen to the roots. Sudden interruptions in aeration can stress the plants and harm their development. When choosing an air pump and air stones, consider the size of your system. Larger systems with more plants will require larger and more powerful pumps to provide sufficient aeration. Regularly check the pumps and air stones for clogs and obstructions. Clean them as needed to maintain proper airflow and prevent blockages that could reduce aeration. It's advisable to have a backup power source in case of power outages. Aeration is crucial and a sudden loss of power can be detrimental to your plants. Warmer water holds less dissolved oxygen, so it's important to monitor and control the water temperature. Cooler water temperatures can hold more oxygen, benefiting your plants. Cracky Hydroponics is unique because it relies on passive aeration, meaning it doesn't use air pumps, air stones, or active aeration systems like other methods. Instead, Cracky Hydroponics relies on the gradual exposure of the plant's roots to the air as the nutrient solution level decreases over time. Here's how aeration works in Kratky Hydroponics. When you start your Kratky system, the plant's roots are fully submerged in the nutrient solution. This provides an initial supply of water and nutrients to the plants. As the plants grow and consume water and nutrients, the water level in the container decreases. As it lowers, a greater proportion of the plant's roots are exposed to air. The roots are capable of adapting to these changing conditions. As they become exposed to air, they form a zone called the air root zone. These roots can take in oxygen directly from the surrounding air, allowing the plant to continue growing. The passive aeration in Kratky Hydroponics relies on the plant's ability to draw in oxygen from the air through the exposed roots. It's a natural process that doesn't require any additional equipment. So here are some important considerations regarding aeration in your Kratky system. While Kratky Hydroponics does provide aeration through the gradual exposure of roots to air, it's essential to ensure that there is adequate oxygen in the growing environment. Good ventilation in an indoor setup or outdoor air circulation can help maintain good oxygen levels. It's crucial to maintain the appropriate nutrient solution concentration to ensure the plants receive the necessary nutrients as they grow. Periodically checking and adjusting the nutrient levels is essential for healthy plant development. Ensure the nutrient solution reservoir is light proof or shielded from direct sunlight to prevent algae growth, which can negatively impact the roots and nutrient solution. Deepwater culture systems require regular monitoring of pH and nutrient levels. Fluctuations in pH can affect nutrient availability. The air pump, air stones and tubing should be cleaned often to prevent clogs and ensure efficient oxygenation. 
Maintaining a system like this is crucial to ensure healthy plant growth and prevent issues like nutrient imbalances and root problems. You should consider these key maintenance requirements for your deep water culture system. Regularly check the water level in the reservoir. As plants absorb water and nutrients, the water level will drop. Ensure it stays at an appropriate level to keep the roots submerged but not completely saturated. Topping off with fresh nutrient solution is usually necessary every few days or so. Measure and adjust the pH of the nutrient solution regularly. Most plants thrive in a slightly acidic range, typically between 5.5 and 6.5. pH fluctuations can affect nutrient availability, so try to maintain a stable pH level. Measure and adjust the nutrient concentration in the solution regularly. Using EC or TDS meters, you can ensure the nutrient strength is within the desired range for your specific plants. Always ensure that the air pumps and air stones are functioning correctly. Maintain the water temperature within the optimal range for your plants. As we mentioned, cooler water holds more dissolved oxygen, so controlling the temperature can help ensure adequate aeration. Keep an eye out for signs of plant diseases and pests. Address any problems promptly with an appropriate treatment to prevent the spread of diseases and infestations. If your system is exposed to natural light, make sure the nutrient solution reservoir is lightproof or shielded to prevent algae growth. Algae can compete with plants for nutrients and disrupt the system. Regularly harvest your plants to make space for new seedlings or transplants. Removing mature plants also helps maintain a balanced nutrient solution. Consider having backup systems in place, like battery-powered air pumps or spare equipment, to ensure your deep water culture system can continue functioning in case of power outages or equipment failures. Compared to deep water culture, Kratky systems require less maintenance once set up. However, you should still monitor pH and nutrient levels to ensure plant health. Maintaining a Kratky hydroponic system is relatively straightforward compared to some of the other methods, but it still requires attention to key aspects to ensure healthy plant growth. Monitor the nutrient solution level regularly. As the plants grow and consume water, the solution level will decrease. Ensure the lower portion of the plant's roots remain submerged. Also check the nutrient concentration. Maintaining the proper nutrient strength is crucial for plant health. Adjust the nutrient solution as needed to keep it within the recommended range for your specific plants. Regularly check the pH of your nutrient solution, because this can affect nutrient availability. Aim for a pH ranging between 5.5 and 6.5 and adjust as necessary. Maintain the water temperature within the optimal range for your plants. Remember the cardinal rule that cooler water holds more dissolved oxygen, which is essential for root health. To prevent algae growth, use light-proof containers or cover the reservoir to block out light. As we mentioned, algae can compete with plants for nutrients and create other problems in your system. Keep an eye out for signs of plant diseases or pests. While Kratky systems are less susceptible than some other hydroponic methods, they can still be affected by these problems. While Kratky systems rely on passive aeration, it is still important to ensure that the plants receive adequate oxygen through the exposed roots. Proper spacing of plants and appropriate nutrient solution levels contribute to sufficient aeration. Regularly harvesting your mature plants can make space for new growth. You can also prune and trim your plants as needed to manage their size and maintain an efficient use of space and nutrients. You can also consider having backup systems in place like spare containers and a source of fresh water, just in case of emergencies or unforeseen issues. Deep water culture systems are considered more complex due to the additional equipment needed for aeration. However, they do offer precise control over the growing environment. These systems can vary in complexity depending on the scale and level of automation you choose to implement. Here's an overview of the complexity aspects associated with deep water culture. Setting up a small-scale system can be relatively straightforward, especially for beginners. It involves a few key components, like a reservoir, net pots, floating polystyrene raft, air pumps, and air stones or diffusers. Compared to some other hydroponic methods, deep water culture requires minimal equipment. You need an air pump to oxygenate the nutrient solution, and net pots or containers to hold the plants. Small-scale systems are generally easy to maintain, Routine tasks include monitoring and adjusting nutrient levels, checking and cleaning air stones, and managing water levels. The system can also be adapted to a wide range of plants, making it versatile for growing various crops. As these systems scale up, they can become more complex, particularly when automation is introduced. Larger commercial systems require more equipment, monitoring systems, and controls. Managing nutrient levels and pH can become more challenging in larger systems. Automated nutrient dosing and monitoring systems may be necessary. 
In large-scale deep water culture, maintaining ideal environmental conditions, including temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide levels can become more complex. Also, some crops may have specific requirements that necessitate more complex systems. For instance, fruiting plants like tomatoes or cucumbers may require additional support structures. The quality of the water used in deep water culture systems can affect plant health. Large-scale systems may require water treatment or filtration to ensure consistent water quality. Managing larger systems also requires more labor and expertise. To mitigate the risk of system failures in commercial operations, redundancy and backup systems will need to be in place to ensure continuous operation. Kratky Hydroponics is simpler and more cost-effective in terms of equipment, making it accessible to beginners or those with limited resources. Kratky Hydroponics is known for its simplicity and is often considered one of the easiest hydroponic methods for beginners. However, it is important to understand both its simplicity and potential complexities. One of the significant advantages of Kratky Hydroponics is that it doesn't require electricity or air pumps. This makes it cost effective and easy to set up. You'll need containers, growing media, net pots and plant nutrients. Compared to other systems, the initial investment is relatively low. Kratky Hydroponics operates passively, meaning there's no need for complex automation or equipment maintenance. Kratky Hydroponics is best suited for leafy greens, herbs and some smaller fruiting plants. While the system is relatively simple, managing nutrient concentrations and pH can still be challenging for beginners. You need to ensure your nutrient solution remains within the optimal range for your plants. Kratky systems are also a bit more sensitive to changes in environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity. Deep water culture is suitable for a wide range of plants, including fast growing leafy greens like lettuce and herbs, as well as some fruiting plants like tomatoes and peppers. However, the suitability of deep water culture for specific crops can depend on factors like plant size, growth habits, and nutrient requirements. Here are some examples of crops that are commonly grown using deep water culture. Leafy greens like lettuce, spinach, and bok choy, herbs such as basil, parsley, and thyme, small fruiting plants like strawberries and peppers. While deep water culture can accommodate various crops, keep in mind the following considerations when selecting crops for your system. Consider the space available for your setup and choose crops that fit comfortably. Different plants have varying nutrient needs. Be prepared to adjust the nutrient solution and concentrations to match the requirements of your crops. Plants with sprawling or vining growth habits, like certain varieties of cucumbers or tomatoes, may require additional support or trellising as they grow. Ensure that you provide adequate lighting for your chosen crops. Indoor systems often require artificial grow lights to supplement natural sunlight. Some crops are more sensitive to temperature and humidity conditions. Deep water culture systems are versatile, but may require environmental control in extreme climates. For crops that require pollination, such as some varieties of peppers and tomatoes, consider how you will facilitate pollination in your indoor system. Certain crops may also be more susceptible to pests or diseases, so monitor your plants regularly and take preventative measures. Cracky is also well suited for leafy greens and herbs like lettuce, basil and Swiss chard. It can also work for some smaller fruiting plants, but plants with longer growth cycles may require more attention to nutrient levels and solution maintenance. Like with deep water culture, you can grow leafy greens, herbs, microgreens, green onions, and Asian greens. You can also grow determinate tomatoes, peppers, and root crops like radishes. Kratky systems are typically best suited for smaller plants or crops with compact growth habits. Avoid large, sprawling plants that may require extensive space. The space requirements for deep water culture hydroponics can vary depending on the scale and number of plants you intend to grow. The primary space requirement for deep water culture is the container or reservoir where the nutrient solution is held. The size of the container depends on the number and size of the plants you want to grow, as well as the space you have available. For small scale setups, a container that can hold a few liters of nutrient solution may be enough. This could be as simple as a plastic container. Larger setups, such as commercial operations, will require much larger reservoirs that can hold hundreds or even thousands of litres of nutrient solution. The spacing between these pots or containers depends on the size of the plants at maturity. Leafy greens and herbs can be spaced relatively close together, while larger fruiting plants like tomatoes or peppers may need more space between them. You'll need space for the aeration equipment, including the air pump and air stones. 
These components are essential for providing oxygen to the roots. If you're growing your plants indoors using artificial lighting, you'll need to consider the space for the grow lights. The lighting setup should provide adequate coverage for your plants in your deep water culture system. The height of the grow light should be adjustable to accommodate plant growth. Depending on the size of your setup, you'll need walkways or access points to reach and maintain the plants, check nutrient levels and perform other necessary tasks. In some setups, especially if you're growing taller plants like indeterminate tomatoes, you may need vertical space to accommodate plant growth. Trellising or support structures may be necessary. If you're growing plants in a controlled environment such as a greenhouse or indoor grow room, you'll need space for environmental control equipment like fans, heaters and ventilation systems. Kratky systems are more space efficient and can be set up in small areas and even indoors. Kratky Hydroponics is known for its space efficient design, making it a suitable option for those with limited space. Here are some space requirements and considerations. Kratky Hydroponics typically uses small buckets to hold the nutrient solution. The container size will depend on the number of plants you wish to grow. They should be large enough to accommodate the roots and allow for the initial full submersion of the roots in the nutrient solution. You can maximize plant density by using vertical systems with plants placed around the perimeter as opposed to the lid of the bucket. If you're growing your plants indoors, you'll need to consider space for grow lights. Allocate space for easy access to your Kratky containers or trays. You'll need to check nutrient levels, monitor plant health and occasionally top off the nutrient solution, especially in very warm climates. If you're growing plants indoors, you may need space for environmental control equipment like fans, heaters and ventilation systems. However, Kratky systems are often used in simpler, low-tech setups, so this may not be necessary. The initial setup cost for deep water culture hydroponics can vary widely depending on factors such as the scale of your system, the quality of the equipment you choose, and whether you opt for a DIY setup or a commercial kit. For every item shown here, we will add Amazon links in the description. Here's a breakdown of the typical costs associated with setting up a small scale deep water culture hydroponics system. You'll need a container to hold the nutrient solution. A plastic container is commonly used and it can be as cheap or expensive as you want, depending on the size and quality. To support the net pots or containers, you'll need a raft for the reservoir. This can be a simple piece of foam board or a custom made lid, which is usually quite affordable. Net pots or containers are used to hold the plants and provide support to their roots. These are relatively cheap, but costs will increase depending on the number of pots required. Hydroton or Lekka are expanded clay pellets and are a common choice for deep water culture systems. A bag of these can range between $10 and $30 or more, depending on the quantity. Deep water culture systems require an air pump to oxygenate the nutrient solution. A small air pump can cost between $10 and $30, and air stones can cost an additional $5 to $10. Tubing to connect the air pump to the air stones is necessary, and this can cost between $5 to $10. To monitor and adjust the pH of your nutrient solution, you'll need a pH meter, which can range from $10 to $50 or more depending on the quality. While not essential for small systems, an EC or TDS meter can be useful for monitoring nutrient concentration. A basic meter can cost you between $20 to $30. Hydroponic nutrient solutions can vary in price, but a small bottle of nutrient concentrate suitable for a small system can cost approximately $10 to $20. However, this will depend on the brand and nutrient formulation. If you are growing plants indoors, you'll need appropriate grow lights. The cost of these lights varies significantly depending on the type and size of your growing area. A basic setup can start at around $50, but larger and more efficient systems can cost far more. The cost of seeds or seedlings depends on the types of crops you want to grow. Costs can range from a few dollars for a packet of seeds to several dollars per seedling. You may need items such as a thermometer, pH adjustment solutions, measuring cups and tubing for the air pump, which can add a few more dollars to your initial setup cost. Kratky systems are generally more budget friendly because they require fewer components than deep water culture. The initial setup cost for a Kratky hydroponic system can vary widely depending on factors such as the scale of your system, the type of crops you want to grow, and whether you already have some of the necessary materials. Here's a breakdown of the typical costs associated with setting up small-scale Kratky hydroponic systems. 
you'll need a container to hold the nutrient solution. A food safe black plastic bucket works well for small scale systems and can cost anywhere from $5 to $20 or more depending on the size and quality. Net pots hold the plants and allow their roots to reach the nutrient solution. A pack of net pots can cost around $5 to $10 for a small system. The growing medium can vary, but options like perlite, vermiculite or coconut coir are commonly used. You can purchase a small bag of these for around $5 to $10. Hydroponic nutrient solutions can vary in price, but a small bottle of nutrient concentrate, suitable for a small, cracky system, may cost approximately $10 to $20. However, this cost will also depend on the brand and nutrient formulation. To monitor and adjust the pH of your nutrient solution, you'll need a pH meter which can range from $10 to $50. If you are growing your plants indoors, you'll need appropriate grow lights. Again, the cost of which will depend significantly on the type of light and the size of your growing area. Expect a basic setup to start at around $50. Seeds are cheaper to buy than seedlings, but you will need the time and space to grow them. Additional seed starting supplies like Rockwell will also be required if you decide to start your plants from seed. So that's that for our deep dive into the differences between deep water culture and Kratky hydroponics. We hope it helped you choose which system might be best for you. If you have experiences with either of these systems, please share your tips in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and we will hopefully see you in the next video.